Why is the Great Pyrenees bite force stronger than expected? How do you think the Great Pyrenees compares in strength to other breeds? Where do you think it would fall within the dog kingdom when measuring Great Pyrenees bite force? You would be close if you guessed the pyre would run in the middle of the pack in a breed contest of power. It would be more accurate to say the Great Pyrenees is near the top among its counterparts. The Great Pyrenees bite force is about 500 to 650 psi, putting it on par with members of the Mastiff family and a few livestock guardian dogs. A dog's body mass, jaw muscles, and head structure determine bite force. However, the Great Pyrenees at 100 plus pounds is strong beyond its jaws. Its wedge-shaped head and relatively long jawline give it the leverage it needs to bite with incredible pressure. How do you define and measure bite force? When you define bite force, it is easy to understand because it is exactly as it sounds. Bite force or pressure is expressed in PSI or pounds of force per square inch. Since experts typically measure pressure in newtons, you might wonder why canine experts convert these numbers into PSI for their lists of strong bite forces. You can even measure an animal's bite force accurately through any means other than newtons or pound force. However, PSI conversions put the numbers in a format that people can better understand. The problem comes when laypeople make uninformed calculations or assume newtons and PSI are the same. It has led to gross exaggerations of the bite force of dogs already struggling with bad publicity. A newton is only a fifth of a pound, debunking claims that certain breeds could bite with 2,000 pounds of pressure. Complicating factors of bite force Several factors make bite force difficult to assess accurately. When you see a source with different bite forces of some of the strongest dogs, they refer to the tooth pressure when a cannon clamps its jaws. It is subtle semantics, but some teeth crush while others pierce. The former group has higher bite pressure over a larger surface area, while the latter involves more pinpoint force or penetration. Such differences are irrelevant when comparing dog breeds but become more important when crossing over to big cats. The distinction is also pertinent when determining which species was responsible for a bite while investigating an injury or crime. Additional difficulties that can arise when trying to measure bite force or pressure are as follows. You cannot successfully direct a dog to bite as hard as she can or chew on command. Scientists have had some success with transducer implants. Dogs bite variably, intent, defensive, or attack. Breed selection, picture soft mouth of Labrador Retriever or Cocker Spaniel, and motivation, warning, or full-blown attack play a role. Electrostimulation used to help measure jaw strength and bite force in anesthetized dogs is not entirely accurate. Disease adversely affects bite force, malocclusion of teeth, dysfunction of the temporomandibular joint, and jaw or mouth pain. According to Frontiers in Veterinary Medicine, there are a couple of promising methods to determine a dog breed's bite force with excellent accuracy. One involves estimates of the masseter and temporomandibular measurements by assessing the areas on the skull where the muscles attach. With body mass and estimating how much leverage the dog can gain with its mandible, scientists can perform a three-dimensional analysis of the forces involved in a bite. Another method looks at estimations through computer tomography models. The bite force is typically the mean between how hard a dog snaps her canines down at the front of her mouth and at the focal point where the jaws meet. In a large dog, the difference between these two measurements can be as high as 400 psi. For example, a Rottweiler with 225 psi of power may have a bite force of 650 psi towards the back of her mouth when she nips you with her incisors. You get an overall bite pressure of 437.5 psi if you average the two. Relevance of bite force a dog's bite force has more importance than satisfying our insatiable curiosity and desire to make comparisons. Bite force may play a role in forensics when investigators try to determine if a particular dog was involved in a bite. Even in justified attacks, it is useful to pinpoint or rule out certain dogs. Intercanine spacing and bite force estimates will hopefully make identifying breeds involved in bites easier. Bite pressure is also relevant from the standpoint of managing tissue damage. For more information, click the link below or visit fluffydogbreeds.com.